Have you ever seen these imaginary dialogues that Muslims post in the comment section in order to mock Christianity? I see them all the time. Once a Muslim posts one of these imaginary dialogues with a Christian, a bunch of other Muslims will just keep cutting and pasting the same fake dialogue. It's impossible for people to respond effectively in the comments because by the time you point out the mistakes in the fake dialogue, it's already been reposted thousands of times. But we've been studying logic in my videos recently, and these fake dialogues are good illustrations of another logical fallacy. Let's go ahead and read one of these fake dialogues, then we'll introduce the logical fallacy of the day. Then we'll go through the fake dialogue again and see what's wrong with it. So, this was posted by Proud Muslima under one of my videos. The logic of Christianity. Who is God? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The Son of God. Who is the father of mankind? Adam. Who is Adam's father? Jesus, who was born after, by the way. Okay, then, who created Mary? God. Who is Jesus' mother? Mary. Does God have a beginning? No. Then what is Christmas? The celebration of Jesus being born. Does God have an end? No. Then did he die on the cross? Yes. Will Jesus be resurrected from the dead? Yes. Who will resurrect him? God. Please share and comment answers, if you have any. The main fallacy here is called the straw man fallacy. Sometimes the name of a fallacy can give you an idea of what the fallacy is. Suppose you want to show how tough you are, and you think that people would be really impressed if you beat someone up. But you know... You can't really beat someone up. So you stuff a bunch of straw in some clothes and build a man made out of straw, like a scarecrow. Then you make sure everyone's watching and you beat up the straw man that you made. And you walk away and say, see how tough I am? I just beat that guy up. But you didn't really beat up anyone. You beat up a pretend opponent that you created. Now, let's take that in a figurative direction. What if you're not trying to show how tough you are by beating up a straw man that you created? What if you're trying to show how smart you are and how dumb your opponent is by attacking his argument or his claims, but instead of attacking his actual argument or his actual claims, you make up arguments, you make up claims, and attack the things you made up instead of attacking your opponent's actual position? This is the straw man fallacy. You attack your own misrepresentation of your opponent's position rather than your opponent's actual position. Let's go through this fake dialogue and see how proud Muslima is attacking a straw man, not Christianity. Who is God? Is the correct Christian answer Jesus? This would be a version of a different fallacy known as the fallacy of illicit conversion. You commit the fallacy of illicit conversion when you reverse the subject and the predicate and think you're saying the same thing. So, as an example for Muslims, if I say, Surah al-Baqarah is the speech of Allah, is that a true statement? You believe it's a true statement. Is that the same thing as saying the speech of Allah is Surah al-Baqarah? No, it isn't. There would be something incomplete about this statement. Why? Because the speech of Allah is more than just Surah al-Baqarah. You believe that the entire Quran is the speech of Allah. But the Quran also claims that other books are the speech of Allah. Then there are things that Allah has said that aren't part of his revealed books. So, while well, it makes perfect sense to you to say, Surah al-Baqarah is the speech of Allah, reversing the subject and predicate and saying, the speech of Allah is Surah al-Baqarah, gives a strange kind of statement. So, Christians say that Jesus is God. Does that mean we can simply reverse the subject and predicate and say, God is Jesus? 
Well, here again, there would be something odd and incomplete about this statement because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are God. A more accurate response to the question "Who is God?" would be Yahweh, the Triune God revealed in the Bible. Next question: Who is Jesus? And the Christian answer is the Son of God. That's true, but Jesus is the Son of God in multiple senses. And we have to be especially careful when we're talking to Muslims, because when Muslims hear that Jesus is the Son of God, they always think we're saying something very different from what we're saying. They think we're saying that God had sex with someone and produced an offspring. Why do they think that? Because that's what Allah says we mean in the Quran, and Allah just has no clue what He's talking about, which proves that He's not God. By the way, in having the Christians say that Jesus is the Son, but using a different meaning for the word "son," this is an example of another fallacy called the fallacy of equivocation, which is changing the meaning of a term in the course of an argument. But let's leave that aside for now. We'll just clarify that we could give all kinds of answers to the question "Who is Jesus?" We could say he's the Messiah, or he's the Savior of the world, and so on. But to help our Muslim friends make their argument here, we'll say he's the second person of the Trinity, the eternal divine Son incarnate, meaning he entered creation and took on the nature of a human being. Moving on, who is the father of mankind? And the Christian answer is supposedly Adam. Here we would have to clarify what proud Muslima means by father, if she means our ancestor or the first man. From whom other human beings came, then that's fine. But we could also say that God is the father of mankind in a different sense, as the creator of mankind. Why is this important? Well, look at the next question: Who is Adam's father? And the Christian answer is Jesus, who was born after. By the way, notice the fallacy of equivocation again. She used the word "father" in two different questions with two completely different meanings in order to pretend that there's a logical problem in Christianity. Christians, if someone asked you, "Who is Adam's father?" would your answer be, "Jesus, who was born after"? By the way, no. If you're talking about father in the sense of creator, you'd just say God. If you wanted to be more specific, you'd say. Yahweh, the Triune God revealed in the Bible. Of course, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the Father of Adam in the sense of Creator of Adam. You can even see the persons of the Trinity communicating in the very first chapter of the Bible when God says, "Let us make man in our image." So we wouldn't say that Jesus is the Father of Adam without a fair amount of clarification. The name Jesus refers to the incarnate Son, the divine Son who took on human flesh and became man. But unless we're trying to unpack some theology, we would simply say that God is the father of Adam. Moving on. Okay, then who created Mary? And the Christian answer is God. Once again, we would have to clarify what proud Muslima means. If she just means who produced Mary. There's an important sense in which parents produce their offspring, but God is upholding and sustaining all of us. So yes, we can say that God created Mary. Who is Jesus' mother? Mary. Wow, correct answer. But notice, we already know that Muslims are going to interpret this answer without paying any attention to Christian theology. How is a Muslim going to interpret this? Oh, if you're saying that Jesus had a mother, then you're saying that Jesus came into existence when he was born, and that he didn't exist in any sense before that. Is that what we mean? Of course not. The divine Son, the second person of the Trinity, entered creation, took on a human nature, and the incarnate Son, Jesus, had a mother as to his human nature. That mother was Mary. Does God have a beginning? No. Wow, correct answer. But watch how everything else gets twisted as proud Muslima ignores all of Christian theology in her fake dialogue. Then what is Christmas? 
The celebration of Jesus being born. That's a correct answer. But in light of basic Christian theology, what does it really mean? Does it mean that the divine Son had a beginning? No, the divine Son entered creation and took on a human nature, and after taking on a human nature, the child was born. We celebrate that birth at Christmas. Think about the prophecy of Isaiah seven centuries before the birth of Jesus. Isaiah 9:6. For to us a child is born. To us, a son is given. The child, the child with a human nature, is born. The son, the divine son, is given. And look at how this passage ties together some of the other things we talked about. The child is born, the son is given, and this child will be called the mighty God. And he'll be called the everlasting father, which is also translated as father of eternity. Now, wait a minute. If Jesus is the divine Son, how is he the Father? Well, he's the Father in the sense of Creator. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit created everything that's been created. See how all of this ties together when you don't straw man Christianity? Does God have an end? No. True statement. Then did he die on the cross? Yes. Now she's equivocating on the word God. My goodness. In what sense did God die on the cross? Well, the divine son became a man by taking on a human nature. And since he had a human nature, he could die for our sins on the cross. Does this mean that his divine nature ended? Did Jesus cease to exist on the cross? No. So how is this supposed to contradict the claim that God doesn't have an end? Was the cross the end of Jesus? No. I can't tell if proud Muslima is really this clueless or if she's being deliberately deceptive here. But the next question should help. Will Jesus be resurrected from the dead? Yes. Oh my goodness. If proud Muslima thinks that Christians believe that Jesus will one day be resurrected from the dead, Does she have any clue what she's talking about? Absolutely not. One of the central, foundational claims of Christianity is that Jesus already rose from the dead. So, proud Muslima, or whoever she copied this fake dialogue from, is someone who doesn't know even the basics of the basics of Christian doctrine. This is someone who has absolutely no clue what the Bible claims. This is someone who has a twisted view of Christian theology because her God and her prophet didn't know basic Christian theology. Last question. Who will resurrect him? God. So, according to proud Muslima, Christians believe that one day God will resurrect Jesus. She inserts her own ignorance into the answers of an imaginary Christian. In light of what Christianity actually teaches, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as the one triune God revealed in the Bible, resurrected Jesus, which means that his physical nature was restored to life in a glorified state. How does this contradict anything else we've discussed? Muslims, if you think that Christian theology is false, just say it's false. When you pretend that there are logical problems here and that you're exposing the logical problems, you show that you have no clue what you're talking about. You can only pretend that there are logical problems through a combination of making things up and committing various logical fallacies. Why do you do this? Why is this so common in Islam? It's common in Islam because it's exactly what your God and your prophet did when they talked about Christianity. Your God and your prophet repeatedly attacked a straw man. They attacked their own misrepresentations of Christianity rather than real Christianity. How easy would it be for me to make up a fake dialogue like this to show that Islam is absurd? Should we give it a try? What is the Quran? It's the word of Allah. Does the word of Allah have a beginning? 
No, Allah's word is eternal. Does the word of Allah have an end? No, as I just told you, Allah's word is eternal. Okay, so who is Jesus? We call him Isa, and according to the Holy Quran, Isa is the word of Allah. Uh huh. And did Isa have a beginning? Yes, he was born of the Virgin Mary. And will Isa have an end? Yes, after he returns to judge, he will die. So the word of Allah had a beginning and will have an end. Yes, you understand Islam perfectly. Now you said that the Quran is also the word of Allah, right? Yes, and the word of Allah has no beginning and no end, right? Yes. Is this the Quran? Yes, but this says published in 2012, so it has a beginning, doesn't it? Of course it does. And if some crazy person were to use this paper to build an entire zoo of origami animals, it would have an end, wouldn't it? Yes. So once again, the word of Allah, which has no beginning and no end. Has a beginning and an end. Alhamdulillah, this is the logic of Islam. So, proud Muslima, are you impressed with my fake dialogue? Does my fake dialogue expose the logical absurdities of Islam? Or would you like to add some clarification to the claims that I'm attributing to Muslims? This is a part of religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.